Tja, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Anton and I would like to welcome everybody very cordially. And in particular, we would like to welcome the rector of our university, Magnificenz Engel. We also would like to welcome the dean of our faculty, Markus Arndt. And we are extremely happy, and it is really a great honor for us that Mary Bell took the effort to come to Vienna to join our conference. Mary, thank you very much. It's now 50 years ago that John Bell formulated his groundbreaking theorem, which serves as a basis for future technologies like uh, quantum communication, quantum information, all that is called now uh, quantum information. Yeah, And so Anton and I thought it might be a good idea to organize a conference to commemorate John Bell and his theorem and to highlight the recent developments. Uh, we are very happy that we received such an enthusiastic response. And I, we both would like to thank the speakers for their coming. We also would like to thank several institutions who gave us, I must say quite generously, the money in, organized, in order to organize the conference. This was the University of Vienna, the Faculty of Physics, the Austrian Academy of Sciences, the SFB for the priority program of the Austrian Science Fund, then the Vienna Center of Quantum Sciences, the Cocos doctoral program, and also the uh, Department of Science and Culture of the University of Vienna. And last but not least, the European Research Grant of uh, Frank Verstrate. And I also would like to thank, as you see, our conference will be recorded by video, so I also would like to thank our central library for uh, performing this uh, videos. Well, uh, then I don't want to <laughs> speak too many words. I just want to wish you a really exciting and inspiring conference. Just enjoy it. Thank you very much. and yeah. I like to repeat experiments to check. Can yeah. you show us your socks? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, feel, I must say, this is one of the things I have to suffer now. <laughs> every, every, every time when Alan Aspect meets me, I have to show my socks. So, excuse me. <laughs> it was not organized, okay? <laughs> But you could expect so, okay. Go back to the No, <laughs> <laughs> yes. First, Tomorrow we're going to ask you to do the same thing. <laughs> and we'll see if they're on the same feet. Linkes <laughs> Bein. So, welcome. Uh, this was obviously an experiment not violating Bell's inequality, I assume. Uh, so, I welcome you as rector of the University of Vienna. Especially, I welcome the widow of John Bell, Mrs. Mary Bell. Very much, very welcome in Vienna. I'm a mathematician. And as a mathematician, I remember 
as a participant of many conferences in my field, how strange it was if a rector from a different field tried to explain to us mathematics. So I will not try to explain to you Bell's inequality. Nevertheless, as a mathematician, I was curious, of course, about Bell's theorem. And if you're curious about something, you look into Wikipedia. And I found the article, well, quite good, a lot of references. So I tried to understand it. Well, mathematically, uh, Bell's inequality is quite simple. Also, its derivation, like also Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, is mathematically simple. The mystery lies for me, of course, in the physical interpretation. At least I tried to understand uh, the axiomatic definitions of locality, of local hidden variables of realism, from which a constraint in the form of Bell's inequality follows. And this is in the inconsistent, as I understand, with the predictions made by quantum theory. Experiments in quantum physics now show that phenomena in consistence with Bell's inequality exist, and the one usual was not one of those, of course. And I am pleased to notice that groups in Austria, especially in Vienna, around Anton Zeilinger, are main contributors to this field. And also a generalization of Bell's inequality to three particle systems is due to three authors present in this room, Greenberger, Horn, and Zeilinger. It's a very famous paper. So it's very appropriate to hold this conference in Vienna. It is on a theorem that has been called the most profound discovery in science. The University of Vienna invests, together with the Austrian Academy of Sciences, a lot into further development in the field of quantum physics and quantum information. Experimental equipment at the roof of this building is used for quantum entanglement experiments over medium range distances. A large project together with the Chinese Academy of Sciences is in its first stages. We are very well aware of the leading position Vienna has in this field and will support it as much as possible also in the future. Thanks for coming to Vienna and I wish you a very successful conference. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> a warm welcome to all of you uh, on behalf of the Faculty of Physics. Um, I'm very glad to be here also in this function, um, although this is kind of my closing duty in, in this function as a dean. Robin Golzer will take over very soon. Um, but um, opening such an event is, of course, one of the highlights uh, of being a dean, and in particular since there are so many friends and colleagues which we have known for so many years. Um, the interesting thing is that, uh, well, we had quite a number of discussions um, over the last, well, in, in, the, in this year in, in particular because we had a change in the government and there was a big debate on why do we need basic research. And uh, often people refer to the laser as one of the inventions uh, where nobody knew in the beginning what the laser was good for and in the end, as you know, it's used everywhere. And um, I think there's a similar story also with, um, with all the foundational um, work that has been done in the context of Einstein-Podolsky-Rosen um, discussions and Bell's inequalities. And for many years, nobody really took notice of that, and only very early pioneers uh, then did first experiments. And John Klaus and Alain Spick can probably tell you how difficult it was in the beginning uh, to get acknowledged for that. And um, now there's, I, th I think it's not, uh, I think it's fair to say there's about more than 100 million euros invested in quantum information technology, probably several hundred million in the Euro European community, in the US, in Australia, in China. There are big programs. Um, so it's, it's becoming an economic factor, so to say, even though you don't have uh, on your desktop yet quantum cryptography, quantum computers, quantum simulators, but they are probably to come. And they're all rooted in this fundamental philosophical question, I should say. Huh? If, you, if you hear a number of these talks today and also in the coming days, uh, you could also believe that you're sitting in a philosophy department um, because there are questions about locality, reality, um, the meaning of life more or less, the free will at least. Um, there's probably also some puzzlement about the free will. That's a separate story we can discuss later. But um, it's, it's really coming out of these fundamental philosophical questions that there's so much technology now being formed. And that is one of the, the great things that we celebrate today and why we celebrate John Bell's um, uh, work 50 years ago. Um, that's essentially all I wanted to say. There's just um, a short um, announcement. On the one hand, 
Uh, there will be lab tours, which will be separately announced, but nevertheless, uh, since we also have labs here tomorrow and on Saturday, there will be lab tours during lunch, and you're, of course, welcome to see all our work. Um, Anton Seidinger's, Markus Aspelmeier's, Philipp Walters, and uh, my own labs, our labs. I would like to thank uh, the organizers, of course, um, Reinhard Bertelmann, Anton Seilinger, Andrea Aglibut is probably also somewhere here, um, and all the team that uh, belonged to that, our students who were involved in that. So th this is not the last conference in the series. Huh? So there will be another one next year, more or less about the same time. And uh, I would like you to pencil this already in your calendars. Um, you may know uh, at least the, the older ones like me, huh? they may remember there was another conference in 2005 and there will be another one in 2015. Um, QPON 2015, Quantum Physics of Nature, the name has a funny history, but um, it's celebrating kind of the year of light and the anniversary, the 650th anniversary of uh, the University of Vienna. It's the oldest university in the German speaking uh, world, so to say. Uh, it also celebrates the University of Technology 200th anniversary and the fifth of the Vienna Center of Quantum Science and Technology and other things that we will then discuss <coughs> next year. Um, so, very warm, warm welcome again. Um, enter, feel entertained and informed by all the talks that we have in the next few days. And um, I think I hand this over to yeah. Reynold. So. Now I would like to ask Mary Bell to say some words to us. Well, I would like first to thank everyone for coming to the meeting. I'm sure John would have been amazed to see so many people here. There's very little new to say, as so much has been written, but I thought I would make a few small comments. As you may have read, he always referred to himself as a quantum engineer. This was because he had become aware of a supposed class difference between physicists and engineers. And uh, not everybody has this attitude. When we went to Stanford, the immigration officer didn't think much of John's description as theoretical physicist, but was very impressed by mine as mathematical engineer. He had never heard of it before. <laughs> as you know, he spent the start of his career uh, designing electron accelerators. Uh, and then after a year at Birmingham University, he joined the theoretical a nuclear physics division at Harwell. Although there were different groups at Harwell, we all had tea or coffee together, and it was there that John and Franz Mandel used to have many arguments, which they both enjoyed very much <laughs> over the tea. As he always said, quantum mechanics foundation was a hobby most of the time, he was thinking about other things. Uh, when the, after the inequality appeared, there was very little interest for a time. I think most people had the attitude of Tini Veltman, who writes in his book, Facts and Mysteries on Elementary Particle Physics. Tini says, why are you doing this? Does it make the slightest difference in the calculations such as I'm doing? Tini says that John answered, you are right, but are you not interested and curious about the interpretation? Gradually, more people began to take an interest, but this took some time. It also attracted a number of non-physicists John always said that CERN was like a railway station with many passers-by visiting all the time. On one occasion, when he arrived in the morning, he found his blackboard covered with questions. A stranger wanted to write a paper with him. The paper was to consist of the questions, 
with the answers supplied by John, but of course it didn't take place. Of course, he also met many well-known physicists there, many of whom I'm pleased to see here today. So that's all. <laughs> It was taken on, at CERN with some friends. <laughs> we always sat out in the summer uh, after lunch. <laughs> One on the left is uh, Lena from Norway, then me, then Hank Wind, and then John in his hat, which is well known. <laughs> the figures behind are uh, some artist who had uh, prepared them for an exhibition. <laughs> I, I remember John collaborated with John Linas on accelerator physics. That's right. Yeah. Yes. By investigating the Unruh effect. Indeed. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. But uh, the other man is just a friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now I think we can begin with our lectures. Our chairman will be Anton Zeilinger and we begin with the first talk.